Hello, your friendly neighborhood host, J.T. Wheatley, back again for another episode of the History of Comics podcast, this time with part two of the History of Fiction House. In the first episode, we dealt with the founding of Fiction House and highlighted many of the many talented writers and artists they had working uh, for, for the company of all uh, genders and colors. And now we're going to get into the really important part, the actual comic books. The diverse, verse, uh, the diverse group of comic book creators we mentioned in the previous episode and more would be essential in crafting Fiction House's comic books, especially the big six, which were Jumbo Comics, Wing Comics, Fight Comics, Planet Comics, Jungle Comics, and Ranger Comics. Fiction House was already 17 years old when it entered into the comic book medium in 1938. When the first four were published, they were called the Cream of the Cr- Comics Crop, or the Four Aces of the Pack. By November of 1941, the Big Six ads started to appear, showcasing features like Jet Aces, Longbow, Sheena, and Fire Hair. Each ad for the Big Six would also encourage readers for, to look for the bullseye when you buy, referring to Fiction House's uh, Target-like logo, promising facts, action, and dramatic adventure. DC Comics would even list Fiction House as one of their biggest in the business in 1946, which also included Dell, Fawcett, and others, in an ad in July... 18th of the New York Times titled Comics Decline to an All-Time High. Of all the comic book publishers, Fiction House was probably the most prominent purveyor of the good girl art, featuring beautiful women on the covers. It was a term coined by American comic book company back in the 1930s, and many of the Fiction House's artists, from Matt Baker to Lily Renee, were masters at it. And as it is today, there is something like a beautiful woman on the cover of a book or magazine to sell it. However, it would also be something that would lead to many of the, the company's future demise. The first of Fiction House's Big Six was Jumbo Comics, which ran for over 163 issues on a monthly basis and then went bi-monthly for issues number 164 to 167. The first issue included features like Hawks of the Sea, a pirate adventure created by Will Eisner, ZX-5, Spies in Action, another Eisner feature about a World War II spy, The Diary of Dr. Haywood, which was created by Jack Kirby and was a time travel adventure, considered to be one of the first original time science fiction comic book stories. Jungle Comics No. 1 also featured adaptation of The Humback to Notre Dame and The Count of Monte Crisco by Jack Kirby as well, along with humor features Pee Wee by Jerry Iger and Peter Pulp by Bob Kane. The standout, though, was Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, who became Fiction House's most iconic character. Sheena was first the protector of a lost jungle kingdom in Africa before being more clearly defined as the daughter of Cardwell Rivington, an explorer whose friend, Koba, accidentally kills him. To make amends, Koba raises Sheena to make her the tribe's new queen, acquiring powers as being able to communicate with animals. As a result, she'll be the first female comic character with her own title, predating Wonder Woman by years. Sheena would fight to protect her kingdom with Bob Reynolds, a great white hunter, as her sidekick, another progressive mo- moment in Fiction House, in which a female lead had a male sidekick, though Reynolds would later become her lover. Sheena would inspire numerous copycats, such as Naoke, Tiger Girl, and Tigra, and even influenced Jane in the Tarzan movies at the time, making her more dynamic and even wearing a leopard skin swimsuit like Sheena. Though this would actually be more in line with the Edgar Rice Burroughs' original depiction of the character in his Tarzan stories. Both Will Eisner and Jerry Iger claimed to have created Sheena, with Eisner claiming her name came from the H. Ryder Haggard novel She, published back in 1897, while Iger claimed it was a play on the popular anti-Semitic slur Sheeny. Since the two were partners, it was likely a collaboration between them, but it was Mort Meskin who first drew her, which was also his first documented work as a comic artist, a career that would span decades for, the, for him and would later, as he would later work for DC, Harvey, and Marvel. Bob Powell was credited with giving her leopard bathing suit for her look. She knew it would become so popular she even got her own series from Fiction House, which lasted for 18 issues from the spring of 1942 to the winter of 1953, becoming the first female comic character to star in a comic under her own name. Robert Webb drew nearly 100 appearances of her, while Ruth Roche provided the scripts. Sheena would be the only character to outlive Fiction House, appearing in movies, comic books, and television, most recently in played by Gina Lee Nolan in the 2000 Sheena TV series. Sheena wasn't the only heroine at Fiction House's Jumbo Comics, as Sky Girl by Alex Bloom appeared in issue number 68, running to uh, 130. Her real name was Ginger McGuire, described as a gal in the trouble in a half-pint glass, and a pilot during World War II. She was drawn mainly by Matt Baker, who modeled her look after the actress Anne Sheridan. 
The second of the big six to hit the stands was Wing Comics, which launched on September of 1940 and was a direct counterpart to Fiction House's pulp, Wing Stories, with both telling stories focusing on aviation, which was still in the infancy at the time. It would be the only Fiction House comic published monthly from the very first issue, running 124 issues till 1954, the third longest of any Fiction House comic. It was managed by Eisner and Iger under the managing editor Malcolm Reese, though this naturally changed when Will Eisner left, with issues number 8 to 110 being produced mostly in-house. On this comic, Gene Fawcett was the most influential artist, focusing on aircraft, of course with more than a few leggy female pilots. As the story Wingtip showcases highly accurate airplane renderings. Ring Comics would focus on war stories during World War II with features like Suicide Smith, about a multinational bombing crew that was penciled by Alvin Collinsworth, another of the early black comic book artists, The Parachute Patrol, about three British kids who decide to fight the Nazis on their own, and Jane Martin, War Nurse. The last feature was the most controversial female character fiction house, with many complaining that she was a woman doing a man's job. Martin would kill just as many people as she would save as a nurse. Wing Comics would also feature different kinds of stories like Ghost Patrol in issue number 66, which went in a supernatural direction in telling tales from the black logs of their quest, usually about the departed riding, wrong, riding past wrongs. Wing Comics would also feature the first professional work of Jane Colin, who penciled the comic in 1944, which included a Wing Tips feature on the P-51B Mustang in Wing Comics number 52 on December of 1944, and the next issue included his first comic book story in the seven-page feature Clipper Kirk. By Wing Comics' end, issues number 110 to 124, they were mostly reprints, like the rest of Fish House comics in their final days, with the exception being that Maurice Whitman provided some new covers. Fight Comics was a bi-monthly series during most of its run and produced by Eisner and Iger under the Fight Comics Incorporated print. Eisner left the series after issue number 12 with Malcolm Reese editing till issue number 17 before Jack Byrne took over. In the 1940s and 50s, boxing was second to baseball in popularity in American sports and and before that was even the most popular sport in America. Thus, a comic book about the sweet science would be a natural, though fight comics would also feature humor and high-adventure stories as well. Like Fiction House's other comics, it had a sister pulp fight stories, which had been published since 1928. The comic would feature characters like Shark Brody, created by Will Eisner and George Tuska, first appearing in issue number one, A Two-Fisted Adventure of the South Seas. Wing com- fight comics would also feature a True Life Stories, a four-page story about real boxers like Jack Dempsey. Other features were Slap Happy Sammy, a comedy boxing strip, Chip Collins' Sky Father, a George Custica creation about the leader of the Skull Scott Squadron, a team of freelance pilots who battle evil, and Strut Warren about Marine's exploits in the South Pacific. Another feature was K.O. Kirby, which would be a tempo for fight comics and the only regular boxing feature that would last before 1942. By issue number 15 in October of 1941, Fight Comics would follow the rest of the comic industry in joining World War II, with its stories and heroes now engaged in it. A few two-fisted women would also join the stories with Senor de Rio in issue number 19, beginning on June of 1942, about a spy deluxe and her adventures, motivated after her fiancé is killed after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Using her profession as a Hollywood starlet, Rio would operate mostly in the Caribbean, fighting Nazis and their Axis allies. Fight Comics would last in issue number 86 in January of 1954, but at this point it was just reprinted stories from Ranger Comics. Planet Comics was the most popular of the big six, with its science fiction-based stories. The first issue was on January 1940, alongside Jungle and Fight Comics, running bi-monthly for 14 years to 1953, with its final issue being number 73. For the last part, from issues number 65 to 73, like the rest of the final issues of Fiction House comics, they was mostly reprints. Also, like other Fiction House comics, it had a sister pulp in Planet Stories, which ran from 1939 to 1955 for 71 issues, boasting stories from writers like Philip K. Dick, Isaac Isimov, and Ray Bradbury. Malcolm Reese would use artists for both titles, and the stories were inspired by Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers, with many of them easily could have been Western war or jungle stories, the science fiction just being a setting for window dressing for the most part. Lou Fine and Will Eisner provided the covers. The comics would also feature stories like Planetary Adventures of Flint Baker, a Flash Gordon crone, or Oro, Lord of Jupiter, a Tarzan knockoff, but on the jungles of Jupiter, I didn't know a gas giant could have jungles. 
And the Red Comic, a rare superhero from Fiction House who got his powers from space rays and used them to protect the universe. Another more interesting feature was Korax, space emperor, which starred a villain trying to take over Pluto, running from issues number 15 to 36. Artists Lily Renee and Fran Hopper penciled the comic, and beginning with issue number 44, a letters page called The Visigraph started. One significant feature was Mista of the Moon, about a blonde woman who, as a child, all the knowledge of the universe was downloaded into her brain, and she would first appear in Planet Comics number 35. The series was penciled by Matt Baker, Joe Doolin, and Fran Hopper, all masters of the good girl art, and thus making her one of the sexiest heroines in comic books. However, this would also make her a target for the Senate Subcommittee and Juvenile Delinquency in 1954 over the beautiful women that it was depicted in it. Jungle Comics was the second longest running fiction house comic produced by I- Eisner and Iger, and like many other co- its comics, it had a sister pulp, Jungle Stories, which ran from 1938. The lead feature of Jungle Comics was Kananga by Alex Bloom, a Tarzan ripoff, only he was blonde. The feature would become so popular, Kanga got a solo tile for 20 issues. Another feature was Wombi, about a jungle boy in India. Simba, King of the Beasts, which starred a line with a human sidekick, Boho, and Fatame, mystery woman of the jungle, who was a reincarnation of an Egyptian priest, princess, complete with superpowers, first appearing in Jungle Comics number 2, and predating Wonder Woman's first appearance in All-Star Comics number 8 on December 1941, January 1942, by nearly two years. Most notable of Jungle Comics' run was a string of sexy covers by Lou Fine, Morris Whitman, and many others that no doubt attracted readers, but also brought the ire to censors, which would be a large contributing factor once again to Fiction House's end in general. The last of the big six comics was Ranger Comics, which began in October of 1941 and would last to the, to the, be the last of the big six to appear. It was an eclectic mix of high adventure from war to westerns. Originally, the book was called Rangers or Freedom Comics for the first seven issues, and then Ranger Comics to issue number 66, before finally being just shorting the Rangers. Some of the features were Firehair, Werewolf Hunters, and Glory Forbes. The first of the war story features was Rangers of Freedom, about a team of three Americans, finest men, and one woman, Percy Cabot, Tex Russell, Biff Barkley, and Glory Travis, who fight the Axis powers. They dressed like uh, red, white, and blue Cub Scout outfits, but would only last for four issues. Glory Forbes was a female vigilante in Private Eye, becoming the first female protagonist of Ranger Comics. Firehair was a lead feature from issue number 21, February of 1945, to 65, June of 1952, starring Lynn Cabot, who fights injustice in the Western Frontier. She would become so popular, Firehair got her own series with Pioneer Western Romance and Firehair Comics, running from 1948 to 1951. The character was created by Lee Ellis, who was very much influenced by the great Milton Kniff of Terry and the Pirates and Steve Canyon fame in providing Firehair style. Werewolf Hunters appeared in issue number 8 on December 1942, starring Professor Brazen, penciled by Lily Rene, who as mentioned before revived the series, turning it from a werewolf to a magic strip. Outside of the Big Six, Fiction House also produced a number of other comics, including a 3D one. Westerns were an especially popular genre of Fiction House, and outside of Firehair, they also produced Longbow, Apache, and a mashup with the romance genre, Western Romances. Of note, and another sign of Fiction House's progressive nature, the American Indians depicted were just as intelligent and civilized as their white counterparts. Fiction House also tried as a horror genre with monster and ghost comics, though, with, though playing more of a psychological horror over EC Fair. Jet Aces and Warbirds were other aviation titles outside of Wing Comics, though they would explore the new jet aircraft along with Korean War. Other notable Fiction House comics were The Spirit, reprints of Will Eisner's classic comic, movie comics, and Toyland comics. However, on, by 1954, it had ceased production, comics production altogether in pulps by the next year. Most of it was due to the creation of Comics Code Authority, regulating them out of the business, as the same cover of the sexy women that sold them to young readers were also brought to the eye of the Senate Subcommittee of Juvenile Delinquency in that same year, with many cited as evidence against comic books as treating women as sex objects. An irony, especially if the senators or Dr. Frederick Warren, the writer of the seduction of innocent that spurred the Senate hearings, had actually read a Fiction House comic past their covers, it was revealed that they were filled with dynamic, strong women, penciled and written and edited by numerous brilliant female creators. In some ways, Fiction House's own progressive nature became its undoing, as it pushed boundaries a bit too far for the powers that be.